What's up guys, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about three things that either increase or decrease your bat speed, depending on if you do these things properly or if you do these things at all. So I'm really excited to share these three things with you. I think it's gonna help you increase your power at the plate. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The first thing that will either increase or decrease your bat speed is separation or lack thereof if you don't get much separation at all. So by separation, what I mean is separation between your lower body and your upper body when your front foot hits the ground and you get to your launch position, okay? So you want to be in a powerful position with lots of separation and you want to have some length in your front arm and you want to feel a nice stretch in your lats here, okay? That's going to help you, you know, really Really maximize your bat speed and the more bat speed you're able to generate obviously the harder and further you're gonna be able to hit the ball and you can think of separation as you know imagine a bow and arrow or a rubber band but if I have a bow and arrow right here and I only pull the bow back this far and then I release it it only has so much potential energy here obviously there's gonna be more energy that's built up if I pull the bow all the way back like this obviously this has more potential energy back here than just here. It's the same thing in your baseball swing, right? So that's why we wanna have maximum separation between our upper body and our lower body because that helps us create potential energy that we can then unload on the baseball. We wanna unload as much energy as possible on the ball, okay? I think we can agree on that. But separation, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it, okay? So let's go over two common problems that I see with hitters who are trying to get separation. And, and it's good that they're trying this, but uh, hopefully in this video, by the time you're done watching this, you'll know the correct way to do it, right? But the first common mistake when hitters are trying to get separation is artificially pushing their hands back. So what I mean is, you're in your stance here, right? And then obviously you go into your load for a timing mechanism and then your stride. And what I see is hitters who think as they load, they have to load their hands. And so it looks almost like this, like they load their lower half and then they push their hands back towards the catcher, back towards the backstop. And you see how artificial and forced that looks? It's because it is. I, I look like a robot when I'm doing that because it's not natural. It's not something that my body just seamlessly does, it's totally forced. But that's the first common mistake that I see a lot of hitters make is they think, well, I gotta load my hands, load my hands. So they push their hands back like this and that's not the correct way that you wanna do it, okay? The other common mistake that I see is hitters don't really get separation and then they allow their hands to drift forward as they stride forward, okay? So we're in our stance here, right? In order to um, swing successfully, we obviously, we have to have a weight shift back. So we have a gather into our backside or against our backside. We load into this rear hip here. We don't want to load over our backside, but we have to have a weight shift back. Obviously when I pick my front foot up, there's no weight on that foot. So my weight automatically shifts back. So I have a weight shift back and then that's my load. That's just the timing mechanism. And then obviously after that, I have to have a weight shift back forward. Now we don't want to obviously get out over our front side like this, but it's almost like a weight shift back to the center. Keep your head between your feet throughout your entire swing. So we load and then it's a weight shift back to center. But a common problem that I see is a lot of hitters with their hands, you know, they load and then as they stride forward, their hands kind of come with them and they get to a launch position with their front foot hitting the ground and it's kind of like this their hands are just in here and then all they have left I mean they can rotate a little bit but all they basically have is to throw their hands at the ball and that's not your most powerful swing you got to get your entire body involved okay so those are the two common mistakes so how do we do it properly well, the way that we do it properly, I think just thinking about walking away from your hands will get you into that position. What I mean is when you load, your hands really shouldn't move a whole lot. There's no pushing motion like this. Your hands should pretty much stay in the same spot or with some hitters, especially if they have a leg kick, Josh Donaldson comes to mind. Actually, he uses it as a timing mechanism. So when he goes into his leg kick, his hands actually come down. It's almost like his knee and his knob of his bat kind of come together like this. And then as he strides forward, his hands work up and back, but he's not pushing them. So I don't care if you, you know, don't move your hands in your load or if your hands drop down a little bit, but it's not pushing them back. 
it's just thinking about, okay, I'm gonna load, and as I stride forward, I keep my hands back. That's gonna allow me to get into this good athletic launch position here, where again, notice I have length in this front arm. It's not barred out straight, but I have length in this arm, and I can feel a stretch here like this. That's a powerful position for me to be able to generate a lot of energy to be able to unload on the baseball. So that's really the secret. There's no pushing your hands back to the catcher, back to the backstop. You just want to avoid any artificial pushing and you want to avoid allowing your hands to drift forward when you make that positive move towards the pitcher, okay? Because you are going to make a positive move towards the pitcher, but you have to keep your hands back. So we load, okay? And as we go towards the pitcher, we walk away from our hands, we get into a nice launch position like this. So separation is gonna help you maximize your bat speed. The next thing that'll either increase or decrease your bat speed is your frame of mind. So are you having passive thoughts at the plate or are you having aggressive thoughts at the plate? Because there's a big difference. Are you just trying to hit or are you expecting to hit? Again, a big difference. So we've all been there before. We've all had passive thoughts where we're kind of afraid to fail. And the key is recognizing, no, I'm being passive here and, and, and changing that, being aware of the difference between passive thoughts and aggressive thoughts and trying to stay on the aggressive side more times than not. So. Passive thoughts would be like, you know, just put the ball in play here, just see it and hit it. Um, passive thoughts would be focusing on things that you're trying to avoid. I hope he doesn't make me look silly here. I hope he doesn't throw me a curveball. I hope I don't strike out again. I hope I don't hit another rollover ground ball. I hope I don't pop up to the catcher again. That was embarrassing. All of those are you're worried about failure and that's very passive. And those things are not going to help you speed up your bat speed. I'm telling you right now, if your entire goal at the plate is to just put the ball in play, that's all you'll ever do is put the ball in play, but you won't drive the ball with any authority. So we need to stay on the aggressive side of things because if we do, on the flip side where those passive thoughts are probably actually slowing down our bat speed, on the flip side, aggressive thoughts can literally help us swing faster, okay? So aggressive thoughts would be recognizing that I have a baseball bat in my hands and it's time to use it. I'm gonna do damage at the plate, I'm gonna attack, not just swing, but I'm gonna attack good pitches, and I am trying to you know, take that pitcher's head off, I am trying to hit the ball hard in the gap somewhere, hard over the fence, and recognizing, I think a big thing is you know, conviction when you step in the box, telling yourself I'm swinging until it's a ball, until my eyes tell me to put the brakes on, but another thing with staying on the aggressive side is just not being afraid of failure. You have to recognize, okay, baseball is a game of failure and I'm gonna fail much more than I'm gonna succeed. And so what I'm gonna do is if I'm gonna fail, that's fine, but I'm not gonna fail half speed. I'm gonna fail at 100 miles an hour. And that's the mentality. It's so freeing when you think about, you know, failure's part of it. And if I'm gonna fail, it's gonna happen anyway, more times than not. If I'm gonna fail, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all out. And the times that I have success, I'm not just gonna put the ball in play, but I'm gonna drive the ball with authority like we were talking about, okay? So very important, are you being passive or are you being aggressive? Uh, what's your frame of mind there? Very important for you to be aware of what you're thinking about. And the last thing I'll say on being aggressive is you wanna be mentally aggressive, but physically you have to stay nice and loose and relaxed. So think about a duck that's sitting there on the pond, right? And on the surface, he might look really, really calm and cool and collected, but underneath the surface, his legs might be churning a million miles a minute. That needs to be you because nothing good happens when you're aggressive mentally, but then that causes you to tense up physically. You tense up in your grip and your shoulders and your jaw and all that kind of stuff. Tense muscles are gonna be slow muscles. So we don't wanna be tense physically when we're trying to speed up our bat speed. We don't wanna be tense. We wanna be loose and relaxed physically because loose muscles, those are our quickest muscles, right? So stay loose physically, but mentally be in attack mode, mentally be aggressive. That's the, the combo that we're looking for here. All right, and then the third thing that's either gonna increase or decrease your bat speed is what I like to call the lower half triangle. So we're focused on obviously our lower half here because if you're not utilizing your lower half efficiently, then you're leaving a lot of bat speed and a lot of power on the table. So I, I really wanna focus on that. We talked about separation between your upper body and your lower body. We were focused a lot on our upper body there. Now let's focus on our lower body. And what I'm talking about here 
is when you get to your launch position, so in other words, when your stride foot hits the ground, when your stride foot lands after you load and after you stride, you want your lower half and the ground to make an equilateral triangle here. You see that triangle that I'm talking about? You want each side to be the exact same length. You want it to be an equilateral triangle. You don't want to overstride and be out here like this and you don't want to understride like this because then again all I have left if I'm in a position like this is to pretty much throw my hands at the ball. We want to be in this good position here. It's an athletic position where we can actually utilize our big muscles and get every ounce of power out of our body as humanly possible because I say it all the time, you hit with your big muscles, right? Your legs are your biggest and your strongest muscles on your body. Don't you think that you can squat more weight or leg press more weight than you can do on maybe wrist curls or bicep curls or tricep extensions? Of course you can, right? You can squat significantly more weight because the fact of the matter is those muscles are your biggest and your strongest muscles. So in the baseball swing, we might as, might as well utilize our biggest and our strongest muscles. That's what this lower half triangle is going to help you do, okay? So it's important to, to, to remember that when your stride foot hits the ground, that's the time when you want to be in this equilateral position is when your stride foot hits the ground. So it's, it's really just getting to that ideal stride length for you. And your stride length is going to play a big part in, or your, your, your stance rather, and your stride length is going to play a big part in what you need to do to get to this particular position. What I mean by that is if you start with a little bit of a narrower stance, that's totally fine. As long as it's a stance that's comfortable for you and it's a stance that gives you confidence, I'm totally cool with that because stance is really just a starting point. But if you like to stand a little bit taller like this and your feet are really narrow, that's totally fine, but what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to have a you're gonna have to have a more positive move, a bigger move in order to get to this equilateral triangle position because my my feet started more narrow, so my stride length is gonna be bigger. Does that make sense? If I have more of a traditional stance with my feet a little bit wider than shoulder width, then I'm not gonna have to stride quite as far. I might pick my front foot up and then you know either put it back down or I might gain a few inches and all of a sudden I'm at that equilateral triangle position. And then you know, on the other extreme, you see hitters that start with a very wide base, like an Albert Pujols comes to mind. He basically starts with his lower half already in that triangle position and so all he has to do he likes to just lift his front heel up like as he loads he lifts his, his front heel and then puts it down you can do that you can just you know pick your foot up and put it back down you can you know some hitters like to do no stride and that's typically that's why you see them with with a wide stance like this because they're not going to take a stride and so they need to be in that triangle position okay so just something that is important I think to pay attention to again your starting point doesn't matter as long as it doesn't cause other issues whether you start with a narrow stance a wide stance whether you start open closed it really doesn't matter but if you watch MLB hitters when they get to that launch position with their front foot hitting the ground they're all going to be in that athletic lower half triangle position that I just demonstrated because that's what's going to help them hit with their big muscles and maximize their bat speed so if you start narrow like this and you only stride this far, you're leaving a lot of bat speed on the table. That's not an equilateral triangle. We want to avoid that. And we also, again, we don't want to overstride and get out here like this. That's doing more harm than good too. Keep your head between your feet throughout your entire load and stride. And when you get into your launch position and get to that lower half triangle position, let's utilize our lower half effectively and let's not leave any bass speed or power on the table. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button. Go ahead and smash it right now. I would really appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe to the channel. That way you never miss any of our upcoming videos. And last thing, hitters, I put together a free contact point checklist for you. You can download it for free by just clicking on the link down below in the description or in the comment section but this will help you make sure that your swing looks picture perfect at the point of contact so that you can maximize your bat speed and your power and your consistency that way you can really reach your full potential this season at the plate so it's 100 percent free go download that right now thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one